Do look you know what, what I got right here. They, like, look at that. So... I love that. I love yeah. that. I, <laughs> I mean, that. Yeah. It's but right I here. see as well as Susanna on yours is Chicago Fire, so which is good. Too, I know. So. I, know. That's I know. That's unacceptable. What is up, everybody? Welcome on into the call up. I am Susanna Collins. That is Jillian Sakovitz. We are back in our AT&T 5G virtual studios Heck after yeah, a road trip. <laughs> Uh, that see, I mean, it was like I was gone for almost two weeks, Jill. I went straight from LA, which P.S. We had the best time ever. That was our whole El Trafico extravaganza was like some of my favorite MLS memories that we have created. It, it felt really great. good, and didn't it? And I think learning so much about those guys, like hanging with Javi, <sighs> um, learning about Steve Turundolo and, and Greg Vanny on like the levels that we did. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like a more informed reporter. So I was really 100%. hoping we pass that along to our, our call up listeners. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, so I went straight from LA to Nashville because we were shooting a feature on the brand new stadium, the beautiful Geodis Park that is going to open not this weekend, the following weekend. And uh, I had I had a great time in Nashville. I always have a great time in Nashville. That is Jill. shocking to me. Shocking. I really thought I know. you were bummed about going there. <laughs> I can't wait to be there with you next week. Yeah, how That's going to be fun. This? I mean, this is, this listen, out? I don't know. Sometimes the universe just works with you. Um, but I have an incredible story that I have been dying to share with you Um, because it's just so it's very um, I don't know. I just feel like it's very like on brand for us and like just kind of captures the essence of, of the call up. Yeah. So this was um, last Wednesday and I was supposed to fly out, fly back home. My flight got delayed because there was terrible weather in Nashville, some crazy weather and champions league was on. So there was um, a bar near my hotel, that was showing the game. So I was Liverpool were playing. We know I'm a big Liverpool fan. So I go to the bar to catch the Liverpool Benfica match. I'm sitting at the bar and Liverpool score. And there's a like contingent of Liverpool fans sitting behind me. I hear people cheering. So I turn around and I was like, oh my God, that's Ian Eyre, <laughs> the CEO <laughs> of Nashville SC, sitting with a group of friends. And one of them happens to be Seamus, who is this massive ginger. redheaded ginger Irish WWE fighter. And I have interviewed him before at Premier League Fan Fest when I've done, done some work for them. So I'm like, I know both of these people. I literally just did a 15 minute interview with, in, with Ian the day before at the stadium. So I'm like, okay, do I go say like, this is, and I had to go right. to the bathroom and I was going to walk right past their table. And I was like, I don't want to be the girl that like, didn't say hi. Like if, if by some chance Ian recognized me and he was like, why didn't Susanna say hello? She walked right past me. So I was like having this like inner Those are debate tough. in my head. Yes. Those are tough. I've had and I'm by myself. So I'm like, what do I do? Oh, being alone is <laughs> so, so I go to the bathroom, I come out and I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to go say hello. Um, and then, you know, just do the right thing. Make my face known and then go back to the bar. So I walk up to Ian and he's like, Hell, Susanna. And I was like, hello. Ian. Had Ian I'm had like, hi. Ian. So was Ian enjoying he, himself. He was having a blast. He was hanging out with his friends, Liverpool with it. So Ian Eyre used to be the CEO of Liverpool. So this Correct. is the yeah, connection. This is good and information for our he's fans. He's from Liverpool. So he's now is the like president of Nashville. SC. Born and bred Scouser, used to run Liverpool FC, now running Nashville SC. Um, so he was like, come join us, CEO come join us. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, I was like, no, 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 no. You know, it's fine. I've got my drink at the bar. He's like, no, 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 you're coming. So he literally pulls up a chair. Seamus is like, I know you. And I was like, yeah, I've interviewed you at some of these Premier League fan fests. But he's like, oh, that's it. Liverpool fan. Oh, my gosh. So then we're just having a party. So Seamus starts ordering beers. I literally was like, I'm going to have one and that's it. Like, oh, no, <laughs> like they just keep coming. I wasn't finishing. Like they were like, just kept putting them in front of me. And um, yeah, so we ended up just sitting there watching the Liverpool match. Of course, it comes up that Kevin Egan is a friend of mine, your uh, colleague. And because Kevin also does work for WWE. So yes. I asked Seamus, I was like, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Kevin Egan. He's like, 
we're calling him right now. We're FaceTiming him. So he FaceTimes Kevin Egan, FaceTimes Kevin Egan. And I'm sitting there with Ian Eyre and Seamus, Seamus and his fiance, um, one of Ian's other friends. And Kevin just must have been like, what is Susanna doing? Like, what? So this I love such a hodgepodge group of people. But like, also the what a bunch of friggin' VIPs in one place. Honestly, this is like a joke. Like, Ian Air and Seamus walk into a bar. <laughs> dot dot dot. And I'll tell you this. So the color to the story is incredible. But this is 2022. So this was Wednesday. Yes. In my text messages, Wednesday at 11:19 p.m., I was texting Kevin. I said, "Well, I see you training tomorrow." <laughs> Uh, yep. Then got a FaceTime off Seamus earlier. Who's with Susanna? Random. So random. Like, exactly. Random. Well, random. random. So random. it was indeed. I don't random. want, I didn't want to ruin the story for you, but like, there's no way I wasn't going to find out within two seconds of this, of this story. But I can sympathize <laughs> with when you're kind of alone in a city yes. and you run into someone, but you're also trying to leave them alone. Maybe. Uh, yeah. He's it's the CEO tough. of Nashville. Like I was like, I don't want to. You know, like be that girl. But then they invited me. Let's they were be so honest, nice. You made their party. Like it, it was so random. I mean, to Kevin's point, random, 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 very random. Very random. That was uh, my story. I couldn't wait to tell you. Gosh, you know, I gotta <laughs> say. So in Atlanta this weekend, um, for them hosting Cincinnati, no crazy run-ins. No Charles B had an Adam Lefko sighting um, oh, in Bar Margo, I where I hang. Lefko. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you always, you're, you're bound to see a Turner person here or there. Um, but I had a little bit of like a aha moment, I guess it would be, that when, so in that time period that we've been watching, it's like the awesome video of Brian Schmetzer with Seattle being like, what he uses the F word, that's all I know, but just yeah. being like, this could be our chance, like first ever time an MLS team wins in CCL. And they're playing Pumas. Well, head coach of Atlanta United, Gonzalo Pineda's first team and like his boyhood team was Pumas. <laughs> and then like his like coach. So that's where his playing career flourished. And then his coaching career flourished in Seattle. And I was like, this just shows like the reach of our beautiful young little league MLS. Doesn't that like, it? yeah, like, look at that. Gonzalo Pineda's like coaching lovers versus his playing lovers uh, going head to head. So I just thought, I just thought it was really cute. That is really very full sweet. Circle. Like how you had a fir- full circle moment in Nashville. I think Gonzalo <laughs> Pineda is going to have that in the CCL final. I love that. I love that for Gonzalo. Right? I love that for MLS. Um, and for things. those of you that want to catch that, uh, the leg one of the CCL final will be at Estadio Olimpico on April 27th, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Can I say time. something? You I think, think MLS gonna is going to do it. Yeah, so. I do. I feel very optimistic. I've never said that before about CCL. And a quick shout out to Brad Guzan um, oh. tearing his Achilles. It was um, it was one of the hardest moments I've ever had on the sideline. And it was so <sighs> weird, Suze, because Atlanta's been very injury hard. Yes. And in the moment that Emerson Hyman is going on for the first time in 10 months, and in the yeah. moment Luis Araujo is going on for the first time in week one, like in that moment that the two of them are waiting to make the double substitution, Brad gets hurt with his Achilles. Um, but we know he's going to be back. And I just wanted to send some quick love uh, I, to Brad. Because he's a ledge my heart. on if, MLS US legend. Um, we have a great interview coming up, by the way. <laughs> Um, an incredible interview with um, RSL captain Demir Krylak coming up, Jill. We're going to talk to him. He's such a, he's what he's like. I know we ta- say this a lot, but he is one of the nicest human beings you will find in this league. And if you ask anybody that knows him, anybody that's around RSL, they will say the same thing. Like he is just a guy who exudes positivity all around. And um, yeah, we're going to have a great chat with him very excited time now for our AT&T 5G call to the field big moment captain of Real Salt Lake Demir Krylock yay Demir, hi everyone on. how are you doing well I mean everything under control unfortunately we didn't have a great weekend in New York uh, City but uh, you know it's yeah. it's 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 behind us, you know. So we learn exactly. from it. We put it behind, and now we are moving forward. So I mean, we had great start of the season, 
just like the last game, uh, as I said, wasn't the best. But I mean, we learn from it, and you know, as one, we're gonna back on on track uh, stronger than ever. So. Every great team in MLS is going to have some crazy loss. And why not get it out of your way in April rather than in September? I always say. I agree. So, you know I agree what? with you guys. Onward, uh, Demir. So let's exactly. get into the show a little bit. We're going to talk about Real Salt Lake, but let's talk about you first. You've been a mainstay with the club since 2018. Born in Croatia, where you began your professional year at 18 at Rijeka. Exactly. Pre- great. Great. So you're Rijeka. just being, you're just being polite. <laughs> yeah. uh, in Croatia's first division, uh, then moved to Union Berlin in Germany's second division before coming uh, here in 2018. So we want to dive into getting to know a little bit more about you. So Demir, who was the first person you looked at as a young boy in Croatia and you said, I want to do that like him? So, you know, when you started to play soccer, you know, especially at this time in Croatia, the biggest name was Davor Shuker, you know, he used to play for Real Madrid, which is, you know, my favorite uh, club uh, still, you know, because of Luka Modric too. And mm-hmm. I mean, a few years ago because of Mateo Kovacic. But I mean, Davor Shuker was, you know, the the idol, you know, he was the, the most popular, I would say, athlete, whatever, sportsman, uh, soccer player in, a, in, a, in Croatia. And then this is how I fall in love with soccer, you know, and, uh, you know, the rest is, you know, the, the, the things that I couldn't imagine it's going to happen um, to me and to my career. So when you came to RSL in 2018, Demir, um, you had said that you had spoken to some former teammates, some guys that had played in MLS. And so I'm curious to know who were those guys and what did those conversations look like? What did they tell you about so in Union with- Berlin? In Union Berlin, I played with Adam Nemetz. So 2017 or 16, he joined the New York CFC. And then I thought he was like the first, per- actually one of the two persons first I, I spoke with. And then the second one was the Michael Spurning. He used to be um, goalie at Seattle, you know, and then to- actually they told me all the best about, uh, about MLS. I mean, during the, the Adam Nemeth's time in, in MLS, I watched a couple of, of games of New York CFC. And then as well, I talked to him, uh, you know, when I got offered from RSL, then talked to Michael and they told me, you never want to get wrong decision. This is, it's, I mean, if you decide to go to MLS, it's going to be right decision. It's something special that um, what the people actually trying to do with MLS. And honestly, I think it was the best decision uh, so far in my career to join RSL. So from the first day I came here, you know, I felt uh, I'm, you know, the big part of the family. And then so far, um, it's nothing less than, than say so great. So, I mean, so grateful to be here. So honored to be part of RSL and, you know, um, just just happy, you know, that's all about. Actually, my family and I are so happy to, to be here and, you know, to um, whatever, to, to spend last four years in Salt Lake City. So then you can answer this question really easily. What is the biggest difference and what's the biggest similarity to life in Croatia versus life in Utah? You know, like um, in Croatia, you know, like I was born and raised in Croatia in in, in my city. And uh, of course, it's your like um, first home, you know. But then uh, when I moved to Germany, used to play for Union Berlin. But when I, I mean, it's hard to compare the clubs. But I mean, all when I'm going to compare um, I have this luck that I play in my career so far just for three clubs. And this is Rijeka, this is Union Berlin and, Sol- and Real Salt Lake. And the, all three clubs, they have the same, I would say, same topic. And that's all about the family, you know. Everyone like uh, in a club and actually, I mean, on and on the field, uh, it was great connection between the fans, between the players, between the, you know, the people they are working uh, for the club. And um, for me personally, it's just a privilege, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, um, so grateful with my career so far, you know, just looking, you know, to give my best every single day, you know, to, to do something special for, 
at the moment for ourselves, for myself, and you know, to make the, the people happy, and that's all about. RSL is one of these teams that I feel like every every year they're they're kind of an underdog. You know, they're one of these teams that I don't think gets enough credit. Um, you are a player that I think like flies under the ra- radar, even though you contribute so much. And, you know, we saw it last year in that remarkable playoff run that you guys went through, um, it, which was just incredible to watch. But Demir, do you feel like this RSL team is often kind of overlooked? And if so, is that something that you guys embrace, sort of that underdog mentality? Exactly, you know, like, but uh, I understand people on one side because like, like example, you guys, the other guys, I mean, they're not working with us, you know, you guys have some maybe other expectation than actually we uh, do, let's say, before the season, during the season, which is normal, which is to understand and actually it's no problem, you know, and then the people put us like underdogs, but that's no problem at all. If the, the people, I would say, if they don't give us credit too much, that's no problem at all. Because at the moment we know who we are, you know, we, we know our identity. We knew it last year too, as well, when the people put us on like 13 seed, 12, 14 seed, whatever, you know, but this is to understand because the people, they don't know what actually quality, uh, you know, we show every single day in a practice and then when you're going to put this on a, on a field on a weekend, you know, and this, this is how, you know, this team find the motivation and do the special thing last year and had incredible uh, run this uh, first seven, seven, seven games, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not all about to, to pro- prove someone wrong. I mean, we as a team, we want to try to do best because we know what quality in a team we have, what depth in a team we have. And at the end of the day, this is what's going to, I mean, if you're giving everything what you what you have, this is what's going to bring you uh, where you deserve to be, you know, because overall, the life is not going to give you what you want, it's going to give you what you deserve. And I mean, as I said before, so far, so great. You mentioned um, Salt Lake becoming like home for you. Um we read that there is a special place in Rio Tinto Stadium called Krylax Corner, um, seating around 500 people. Tell us about them. 200 of those tickets coming from you personally. Tell us about Krylax Corner. Yeah, actually, appreciate that. You know, appreciate it, this topic. Um, yeah, but I would say all credit is going to our uh, RSL Foundation uh, director, Karl Schroeder. Uh, it was maybe, I would say, two months ago in preseason. Actually, he brought this idea to me to do it. And um, I didn't, you know, think one second, you know, because the, um, this community gave me a lot in the past four years. And then I just wanted to give something back, you know. And I'm so happy that the other three sponsors, you know, matched the, the offer we did, I did. Uh, however, you guys want to wanna take it. And mm-hmm. so happy, you know, to make the people happy, uh, you know, to bring the people they unfortunately can't afford the tickets, to bring them on mm. the stadium, you know, to to cheer on us, you know, to be happy, to spend some time with the families on the stadium. And at the, and, uh, at the end of the day, you know, to to fall in love with RSL. And that's all uh, that's all about. And, you know, we are uh, in progress to, you know, to make more free tickets for them, you know, to that at the end, it's going to be more than 500, more than six, maybe to go max to thousand tickets. And hopefully we're going to we're going to do it. But as I said, all credit to our RSL Foundation director, uh, Karl Schroeder. It's amazing. And that's a, a, such an indication of the way that you have embraced the, the club, the city um, and, you know, right back in return. And you've also been named the captain of RSL this year, which um, I know is probably a huge honor for you. What does it mean it to wear the captain's armband? What what do you what do you bring as a captain to this team, Demir? You know, I mean, I would say, first of all, um, thank you to Pablo and his, uh, you know, coach staff. And at the end of the day, to all the employers um, for belief on myself. You know, it's a huge honor. I used to be the captain in Rijeka, in Union Berlin. And, uh, you know, now in RSL, 
it's a um, privilege, huge honor, it's responsibility, you know, and um, all of what I want to do, it's just like, um, you know, try to help the teammates and I would say every employee of the club on and on the field, you know, uh, it's just like um, when we are talking about team, you know, I, 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 I try to actually what we showed last year as well, especially the end of the season, I want to bring um, in this team, like never give a, uh, up mentality, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, we know who we are. It uh, doesn't matter if, you know, uh, someone has much more quality than us, but we want to be mentally strong and, uh, you know, um, try to, to go through all this, um, cir uh, I don't know how to say, cir cir to Macy's or uh, all through the, 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 the things they're not exactly exactly so and that's that's all about and um, you know so far so far so great as I said before very mm -hmm. happy you know to lead uh, the team and uh, you know all we want to do you know to um, try to do great things this season and you know to at the end of the day to bring it back but I mean it is going like day by day and um, I mean, behind the scene is so much work to do it. And we just have to stay humble, you know, to, to training uh, the way we, we, we training and then go uh, step by step. Step by step in so many ways for Real Salt Lake, right? Like new ownership group, um, coaching transitions, uh, which was a major talking point last year after that situation evolved the way that it did. Uh, I know Suzanne and I have had really lovely conversations with Pablo Mastroeni Throughout his time in MLS, you know, I think about what a lovely guy he was to talk to when he was head coach of the Colorado Rapids um, and exactly. has just been on the MLS scene for a long time. What makes him unique and what made him the right move to be the head coach at Real Salt Lake this year? No, even like when um, the club wrote him last year as assistant coach, you mm -hmm. could see his experience. You know, he was assistant uh, coach of, of Freddy Juarez, you know, but still... You could see from the first day his experience, you know, his knowledge about about soccer and um, his never give up mentality, you know. And uh, when he took us over last year in August, September, you know, I think overall he improved every single person, not just the players, every single person in a, in a club, uh, you know, um, he improved a lot, you know, and that's 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 all about. That's uh, who Pablo is. First of all, great human being, and then great coach. And the uh, development uh, he did with with the team is just amazing, you know. I mean, he understands us. He knows exactly what he can um, get from us, and this is uh, how you, as a player, try to to respond and you know to bring the the, the quality and the, at the end of the day, great behalf on uh, on the field. Uh, it's one of the the most important things about a coach, I think, is, you know, just being able to get the best out of the players you have. And one of my favorite moments last year, Jameer, was after your win in Kansas City and, you know, nobody nobody had really given you guys a chance. But here you are on this playoff run. And I was doing a post game interview with Pablo and you came over and gave him the biggest bear hug from behind and said, yes, boss. And you could just see <laughs> the love. You could see how much um, the entire team has responded to Pablo. And it was just such a cool moment to see because there's such a, a level of mutual respect there. Exactly. And it was just like when one of my on this, uh, favorite moments. Yeah, I just got goosebumps, you know. So it's, it is. it is. It's not just like uh, about, you know, at this, at this moment about myself. I think that every single... A uh, player in a locker has so much respect to him just because of uh, what um, he's done uh, so far overall in soccer, what he's done for uh, the clubs he played for, what he's done for for the um, uh, American national team as a player. And then it's nothing that um, everyone has so much respect to him, you know. And, uh, you know, very honest guy, uh, I would say, one of the best coaches I ever had in, in my career so far and just like so, so happy, uh, you know, to work, uh, to work with him. So, and uh, I mean, the sky is limit with Pablo <laughs> and uh, I mean, we just try to follow his ideas and his assistant coach's ideas, uh, you know, because we know with him, we're going to get uh, every single second better. Demir, 
so much, you know, to still accomplish for all Salt Lake with you on that squad. Uh, but there's been some really exciting moments. If you go all the way back to 2018, what's your favorite moment so far with Real Salt Lake? Join Real Salt Lake. Joining. That's the, fav- that's the fam- favorite moment, you know. Uh, I mean, as I said, since day one, I just like, um, you know, felt so grateful to be here, you know. But then <clears throat> we have like a couple another great moments. Uh, you know, which was like LSC playoff game 2018. <laughs> uh, then, um, you know, the game against Portland playoff 2019 at home to um, last year, it was like maybe the best, um, you know, playoff run. And I would say the, bl- the best time in my career overall, uh, you know, how we how i enjoyed the, the 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 football you know with the with the team because we were at this point we were team and i mean we had so much luck uh actually that the the um, off season wasn't that long so we mm. kept momentum from for for, uh, for this um you know this season as well and uh, i mean as i said first seven uh games was special you know the the way we played the way we fight uh, even at some point we had like 11 injured guys but then the guys uh, stepped uh, in. They were amazing, which means, you know, we have so much depth in a team and we did all right things to actually Pablo did uh, all right things, you know, to put everyone on the same page. It's uh, yeah, it's really remarkable. I just there's so many moments that that stick out um, and that you have been involved in. Obviously, the crane kick goal in mm-hmm. 2018 was one like literally, I think it's probably my favorite MLS goal I've ever seen. Um, the goal sure. last year to push you guys into the playoffs. And it's so funny. What's so interesting, Demir, is that when you were signed to RSL, I mean, you were signed as basically like a, a box to box midfielder, but you have become such an integral part of this attack have you always had a nose for goal like have you has has that always kind of come naturally to you yeah actually when we go back you know when i started to play soccer which was like with i was six years old you know i played every time like the whatever like 10 and 9 7 11 whatever position you guys wanna wanna, wanna take it and then you know as i got to pubers you know i just like grew up too fast you know and then uh you know I lost my uh, my speed, you know, I was like too slow. And then, you know, like when you start, when I got actually to professional soccer, the first game uh, I played 90 minutes was on the right back. So, but for me personally, it was the most important thing to, to play the games, especially for the, for the young players. That's all about just like to, I mean, it's completely another level, say to play college or, uh, with all respect, USL uh, game or MS, uh, MLS uh, game at this point. So for every young uh, player, is the most important thing to have consistent, uh, you know, time of, of playing games. And then I play like whatever, six months as a right back. <laughs> then actually the current uh, national team coach of Croatia, uh, he came uh, to the club. He took the Rijeka over and then I played as a six. And then every single year I played, they pushed me a little bit forward. So yeah. it was it. <laughs> I'm sensing so that. <laughs> it was the same thing in Union Berlin. So they signed me as a, as a six, and then first year I played six, then second year I played eight, then third year I played as a ten. Some of the games I play as a nine too, and then I was switching between eight and ten. And then the same thing happened uh, uh, in with Real Salt Lake. So it's like, it's pretty funny. <laughs> but I mean, doesn't matter what position I play. I just enjoy, you know, to be uh, on the field. Exactly. To be on the to be on the field and uh, you know to try uh, to give the best and help the team on the best way I can. I know, I know you're giving the right answers and like I'll play anywhere, whatever coach needs, whatever my teammates need. But like in your dreams, like. When you're going out, do you have a preferred position? This is like eight or ten. You know, like um, okay. I mean, uh, we used to play Union Berlin like the system four three three. So I play uh, eight uh, on the left side, and then uh, now let's say especially last two years, two and a half years, I played as a ten. But this is like the my preferred position. I like to be, you know. Uh, I'm not the guy, you know, when we are like honest, uh, the guy who is going to take two, three guys over. I'm not that guy. I'm a guy like, uh, you know, try to play simple, 
to be uh, in a box, you know, to, to give some assists and, uh, you know, to scoring the goals. That's actually, you know, all of us, we have some job and actually that's my job. Uh, I feel the most comfortable. Love that. Um, Demir, you, one of the, the words that you've, you've used frequently in this interview is, is family. And you talk about family a lot in terms of the club, but I know that you are also a big family man yourself. Um, you have a beautiful wife, Ivana, um, two kids. Can you, uh, can you tell us what, what family life looks like for, for the Krylocks? It's like, you know, they're my biggest support with the family back in Croatia, with my wife's family, with my family. You know, that's um, the family is, you know, number one. You know, it's all about them. And then everything else is, is, is after that, uh, whatever it is, you know, at, the, at my point, soccer, you know, and all this stuff. But it's all about the family. I mean, they have so much uh, fun in Seoul Lake, you know, uh, my second um, daughter, she was born two years ago in in Salt Lake City, so mm -hmm. Salt Lake City is always gonna be uh, our home. Uh, so the first daughter, she was born in Germany in Berlin, so five and a half years ago, and uh, you know just like to see them, uh, you know, uh, at the stadium while we're playing uh, the games, especially home, and uh, just the support actually they gave me is uh, you know it's uh, something that I can describe, you know. I mean, actually, my wife, uh, you know, with 23, 24, she left the job, you know, she left the friends, you know, joined uh, me to go to, to Germany, you know, to, uh, you know, be on my side, you know, to give me the, the old strength, you know, actually in the good and in the bad times. And, you know, this is something that actually you, you can't, you know, uh, you can't respect. And because of that, I respect that a lot. And, um, you know, they're my everything. Love that. A lot of sacrifice by all involved uh, exactly. in this job. That is for sure. Before we let you go, uh, Demir, RSL will face uh, Northern Colorado Hailstorm of USL uh, in their fourth fourth ever uh, exactly. game. Yeah. Whoa. Amazing. Yeah, this works, really. Uh, coming up this week in Open Cup action uh, with after two years without Open Cup, it's back for all of our MLSers that love it so very much. 18,000 expected at Rio Tinto Stadium, breaking your own Open Cup attendance record. Uh, set the scene for us uh, this week with that many So, actually, hand. first of all, you know, uh, I did mention as well, uh, you know, on behalf of the team, I would like to say uh, thank you to the, our new ownership group. You know, uh, it's, um, I mean, great to see uh, you know them to believe in team it's great uh, actually to see that they actually recognize how much the rsl means um, for for the fans how much means for the state of youth and at the end of the day for for mls uh, so it's it's unbelievable and i mean just like three times in a row we had uh, you know uh, sold out stadium like mm. against uh, seattle against nashville against toronto which means the expectation is high um, you know, we set the bar and uh, even tomorrow, the, um, you know, the U.S. Uh, Open Cup game, uh, you know, we are happy to, to have those games, uh, you know, just like uh, we like soccer, we like to, to play the games and especially the expectation of 18,000, it says a lot. It says that uh, so far we did great things, you know, that we made the people happy, we made the people, uh, you know, happy to come to the game, to cheer on us, to believe in us. And our responsibilities, especially now after like losing uh, the game against uh, New York CFC, to give great response. Uh, and we are not allowed now to ask ourselves the questions, are we good enough? Uh, yes, we are great, not good enough. We are like great. And it's all about, uh, you know, uh, to give a great uh, response, great reaction, because we learn from it. We put it behind us and now we are moving forward. So looking forward to you know, to have great um, game tomorrow and then uh, all concentration on, on uh, Portland and uh, on a game on Saturday against them. Love well, it. thank you so much. This was lovely. Thank and we you. can't thank wait you. to thank see you. you back out there tomorrow. What's and this? guess what, Demir? We, we don't think RSL are underdogs. 
No. At all. No, At all. I, we are no, I, we are hundred percent behind you guys, this team. I know you guys don't, so we really appreciate that. But I mean, as I said, whoever put us, it's their rights, no problem. But I mean, RSL knows. Uh, I mean, um, who is you know, and then yep. we're gonna give um, every game our best on the field and. We have to do it. So that's our responsibility. So much fun to watch. Demir Krylak, thank you so much for the time. Thank Best you of luck so much. I really appreciate that. Here for this. Well, um, in the spirit of here for this, I can't help but bring this one up, Susanna Collins. Okay. As I am wrapping up my game this past Saturday, Atlanta versus Cincinnati, uh, a tweet comes my way that is from Kelly Francis, and it says, Ayo Sakovitz, he is willing to take your <gasps> last name. And there's a, a very nice <gasps> fan wearing Sakovitz, number nine. Okay. Which really could be from Milberg High School if you just make it blue and white. So my question for you is, I was in, you know me. Yeah. I Okay, I'm on TV, so obviously there's some level of attention I like, but like, for me, this made me uncomfortable because I felt what so sorry. What if his sorry. last name is Sakovitz? There's, Zeus, there's, there's what no, if... there, no, no chance. There's 0.0, 0 chance. Anyone <laughs> with the last name what Sakovitz, if... I know them. They are a cousin. And yeah, uncle, and there's like 20. Somebody. And there's like 20 people with the last name in the world. I Google this stuff. So like, uh, so nice and thoughtful, but then also like, heck yeah. How did this, like, how, how did they get this? Like, do I not tell theory. me that they picked up, uh, that they picked, I think they no, lost I a bet. I have a theory. I have a theory. I, I think have they a theory. lost a bet. I bet he's probably developed a little crush <laughs> on a certain Atlanta United reporter. And I, no. bet his friends, I bet his friends, like, got him that jersey as, like, a gift. You know, like, kind of like a, like. Very sweet. Yeah, really that's made what I my think. day. Uh, but my big thing was, and I didn't want to dive too much. I in love that. I think, dude, I would, I mean, Collins is kind of like a common name. So like mm -hmm. there's probably a million walking around, but I, I would be very flattered if I am. I I'm very that. flattered. The Atlanta fans are really like the support, most supportive, most sweet. Like I could drop a leaf and they're like, Jill. Great try. Great job. Like, they really are so nice and so supportive. Aww. And when they see me on other assignments outside of Atlanta, they're still really nice. Like, I love them so much, but I just want to know how did this come to be. And I just really can hope we find that out? no one, you have to pay extra for customized jerseys. No, can I we really find hope out? no okay. one made this decision. So this was, okay, if if I'm assuming, if this guy is a, as big a fan of yours as I think he is, considering he has your jersey, he probably listens and watch or watches this podcast. Who are you, sir? Make yourself known. We How did to happen? know the genesis of the Sackovitz Atlanta United I will reimburse. Jersey. I will reimburse you. I Let, really no, we will have you on. You will, we like tell the story. You can meet Jill. Um, let's... <laughs> It's a great here for, story. Here for the niceness, a little unhere for how uncomfortable it made me. That's but, a great uh, overall, story. Overall, I love very it. flattering. So I love it. Fingers, I, fingers Jill, I would, I would wear a sack of its jersey. Just, You're such a nice friend. I would. You know, you know that we are fully here for players expressing themselves, um, be it artistically, through fashion, through hair, what have you, what have you, what have you. Well, Paul Ariola taking it to a whole other level. I believe this man has been having some conversations with one Kellen Acosta because uh, if you follow him on Instagram, you will have seen his latest post, um, which is... A straight up like professional photo shoot where he is rocking um, some very stylish clothing, sunglasses, denim shirt. But, but, but the big talking point here, Jill, he uh -huh. has a straight up cross body purse on him. Now, this is a it's a, not a cross body, body bag. I say purse because it has a top handle, like a top handle purse. Do you think he's ever held it like this? I don't know. I don't know. That's but, all I want to know. But I I mean, I'm look, okay again, it. we are so here for it. And his, his caption's great. He says, dress how you feel. That's the inspiration. Love that. Super positive. Like Love you that do for you. you. 
I am very on the fence about this bag, mostly because I'm jealous because it's a looks like a very right. expensive, fabulous handbag. It looks like a handbag. That's what I should just say. What brand say. is it? I can't even. I don't know. It looks like TC? there's kind of a T, a C. Do you want to you know guys, why check it you're out. jealous? Check it out. Why? <laughs> because you and I went on a little bit of a secret mission where we won't get into the <laughs> specifics, but we implored the other one to each buy black uh, designer bags. Yeah, we did. Uh, which we, did. we like to wear happen. at the same time. So did Paul happen. could join that trio. He could. Of us. I, but I think his bag is probably even nicer than both of ours. Impossible. And let's give a quick thanks to the Columbus crew. Oh, don't don't think we forgot about you, Columbus. What happened was we were in LA for like a month, but they sent us a really amazing gift. <laughs> we customized were. bright, 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 bright yellow call up jerseys. And like if a we were talking full of swag to Demir Krylock, we would uh, have them on, but I think he'd find that a little disrespectful. I know we didn't want to. We didn't want to put him off right away, but look at these. I mean, call up 22. These are really, really nice. So this begs the question, if we could pick one person to have on from Columbus, who would it be right now? Oh my God. I mean, Lucas Zellerayan, Jazzy. Uh, you know who I want to have on? I want to have on Caleb Porter. Ooh, you know what? He's a, he's a fascinating dude. I'm, I'm down for that. We could talk fashion with him. Consistent. Mm -hmm. is the consistent. Word. We like Captain to use. consistent. We like. And uh, la no, last but not least, if you are listening, <gasps> uh, you may have heard me say last a couple episodes ago that when the U.S. is winning, it makes you want to buy stuff. Well, we didn't have to buy these. We got these awesome cards, <laughs> 2022 tees uh, with a little nod to Pulisic, Ted Lasso. Really, really cute. And you know what? I'm telling myself that that's an MLS ball in there, too, by the way. It kind of looks like the one from Yeah, it could now. be. But um, this from is, Jeff uh, Attenella's company, yeah. Smack Apparel. Check them out at Smack Apparel. Uh, they're putting together some cool, cool little things for the uh, really little World Cup. So very thank you, sweet, thank you Jeff. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff Attenella. You are a rock star. I will be wearing this uh, it come November. Is that when the World Cup starts? <laughs> Oh, feels like forever. But November. We'll get there. We'll get November. there. You know what? I'm not taking this off until November. That's controversial. That I don't know if I'm here for. What's on tap? Um, well, guys, in celebration of Earth Day, this Friday, April 22nd, MLS Works launched the fifth annual Greener Goals Week of Service. And until April 24th, MLS and One Tree Planted will plant a tree for every tweet that includes the hashtag Greener Goals and tags MLS Works. So planting up to 28,000 trees. It's a lot. For more information on how MLS and its clubs are participating, you can head on over to MLS Soccer. Dot com. We love that. Plant initiative. a tree. Heck yes. Um, and like we mentioned, if we haven't said it a hundred times already, we are heading to Nashville <gasps> ahead of the opening of the brand new Judas Park. Uh, we're going to be speaking to some incredible people. Susanna was kind enough to set that up last week. So spoiler, no, alert, just an alert. Uh, we will not be coming out on Tuesday. We're switching it up. So next week it is a Thursday episode that's how we get all these important people in one place so keep your eyes out for that uh be dropping a little bit of a vlog uh we'll see if we can get into the nashville training grounds or easier than we could get into lafc <laughs> so stick with us and um we won't we'll see you in a week in two days <gasps> giddy up giddy up What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call Up. And if you want more Call Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?